In this video, I'm gonna show you how to wash your down quilt or your down sleeping bag. And this is one of those processes for backpackers where we get a little bit worried and nervous about it because you just have all these bad images that go through your mind when you think about getting your precious down quilt or down sleeping bag soaking wet. You spent a lot of money on that gear. You don't wanna wreck it, but no reason to worry. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to get that done. And I'm gonna throw in a couple of tips and tricks along the way that I've learned to help that process go more smoothly, more efficiently. One thing I will say before you go ahead and start this process is you wanna make sure you have several hours available, like probably a half day. It does take quite a bit of time from the time you start till the time you're ready to hang up your quilt again. You won't be working that entire time, but you need to be present because you're gonna be checking on things, especially when we get to the part where we're drying out the equipment. With that in mind, let's head upstairs to the tub and we're gonna go ahead and get started. There are a couple of things you're gonna need. The first one is some special down soap. I like to use Nick Wax, but you can use whatever down soap you'd like. For this process, we're not gonna use regular laundry detergent that is not recommended by the manufacturers of the down equipment. Obviously, you're gonna need your down quilt or your down sleeping bag, and you can wash the stuff right in the tub. But one thing I like to do is I am gonna use a smaller Rubbermaid tub for this process. It just makes it a little bit easier to manage the level of water you're using. You can use a little bit less soap because to fill it up a couple of inches in your tub takes a ton of water, whereas you can use a lot less water and a lot less soap if you're using a tub. However, I do recommend that you're in a tub because you will be dumping that water out, you'll be rinsing, you'll be squishing the water out of your quilt or sleeping bag several times throughout the process. So although I'm actually doing the washing in the Rubbermaid, I'll be using the bathtub itself a lot of times throughout this process. The first thing we're gonna do is put water into our Rubbermaid or into the bathtub. Now, the instructions on the Nick Wax say 3.4 ounces of soap for every three to four gallons of water. So I just measured out 3.4 ounces on my kitchen scale, and the water I'm using is gonna be hand touch warm, so kind of lukewarm water. That's what the instructions say on the soap. I really don't think you wanna go with super hot water. I just can't imagine that doing good things to your equipment. So I'm gonna follow the instructions on the bottle and I always just use nice warm water when I'm doing this. I've got the water in the bucket and I've got the soap in there. It's nice and mixed up. And before we get started with the washing part, uh, the instructions on the Nick Wax do say to wear rubber gloves. So I'm gonna be wearing some nice fancy purple rubber gloves for this process. Once your water is ready, it's time to get the quilt or sleeping bag in there. But if you just try to stuff it in the water, that fabric is generally repellent of water and it's very difficult to get the water inside the fabric if you just stuff it down there. So the tip I have for you is roll it up super tight and then dunk it in the water and hold it under there and kind of let it suck that water back in. So I've got this squeezed down about as tight as I possibly can. Now I'm gonna put it in here and hold it and squeeze as much air out as possible. And you can see it still pops up a little bit. So you gotta just keep holding it under there. So you just gotta keep squishing and squishing and squishing. This is probably like the hardest part of the whole process, the initial getting it all soaking wet. So it does take several, several minutes of it. I am still going and I'm just trying to get all that air out of it. And once you've got all the air out of it, you just kind of let it sit for five or 10 minutes and let that soap do its thing. It should be sitting pretty low in the water when you have most of the air out of it. And I'm just in the process of letting it sit. After a few minutes, I am gonna flip it over just to make sure both sides have a chance to fully soak. The five or 10 minutes has passed of it sitting in the soap, so now it's time for one more round of squishing, and then we're gonna drain that soapy water out of there. Now we're gonna just dump this out. And the water was not overly brown coming out of there, but it certainly wasn't super clean either. So we know we're doing some cleaning as we do this, which is good news. So now that this is out of here, the next thing I'm gonna do is just let that water drain for a minute or two. 
out of the tub and then I'm going to squish as much out of that quilt as I can. What I'm trying to do now is just squish as much of that soap water out of here as possible. And this does take a little bit to do and you can see all the water that's draining out of there. So just keep working on this and I like to roll it as well and get as much water out of there as humanly possible. Now that I have all the water squished out of it, it's back into the tub and I'm just going to dump a bunch of warm water in here again. I have several gallons of water in my Rubbermaid. No real need to measure it. Just get a bunch in there. It's really more about rinsing this thing out than anything else and just start squishing and squeezing. And I'm not going to show you all that. You guys can picture in your mind what squishing and squeezing looks like. You've already seen it when I did it with the soap. But now I'm just going to work on this for a few minutes and then dump that water out. I just got done with that first round of rinsing and I wanted to point one thing out. I think it works well to just squeeze this down underwater to the, as tiny of a ball as you can get it into and then let it relax and draw all that fresh water in and then just repeat that squeeze it all the way out and you should notice the water turning slightly cloudy. That means you're getting that soap out from the last step. And now we're ready to dump out this rinse water. And I'm going to let that drain and I'm going to squish all the water out and I'm going to repeat this process two more times. I know that sounds like a lot, but I want to make sure I have every bit of soap residue out of this quilt that I can. Just squishing out all of this rinse water. Just roll it up. So just rolling it into a big ball. Rolling and pressing is what I like to do. What I don't do is twist it or wring it. That is not going to be good for the down and not going to be good for the fabric itself. So just roll and press. And now that I've got this into a ball, it's ready to go back into the tub with some more fresh water and repeat that. Like I said, two more times. I'm now working on my third and final rinse cycle. And one thing I would point out is that down when it gets wet can smell a little bit funky. Don't worry about that at all. Even when you're done rinsing it completely that third time, it still may smell a little bit off. That's just totally natural. Down is a natural substance. It shouldn't like completely reek, but when you dry it out, you won't have any of that smell at all and it'll be fresh and good as can be. So one final thought on the rinse process, I am squishing it down as tight of a ball as I can get and then I let it relax and it just sucks all that fresh clean water in to the to the down and the material. I kind of let it just um, fluff itself out for a minute or two and then I dump the water out and squish all that water out into the tub. I think this is just a very effective way to get clean water into the down into the material that you can then squish out in the tub just trying to get all that soap residue out of my quilt. I finished all of the rinsing process and this is what I'm left with is just a very heavy ball of down quilt. So for the next part grab yourself a bunch of towels. This is a really important part of the process. What I've done here is I have laid out two layers of towel on the floor and ideally you would do this not on carpet but on a tile floor and that way you're not going to get a bunch of water leaking into your floor. What you're going to do is lay the quilt out on the towels and then you're going to put another layer of towels over the top and you're going to walk on it to squish it and get rid of all the moisture that you can. I have the quilt laid out on top of the towels and always make sure you use the wife's good towels. She loves that. My wife just loves it when I use the good towels for this. And then I'm going to lay some towels over the top of it and then I'm going to just step on it. And I'm going to be using my camp shoes because they have a nice wide bottom. You could probably use bare feet. Just make sure your shoes are clean. That's all. Put my towels on top. And then at this point, I'm just going to step on it all over the place. And the idea is to get every last bit of moisture that I can out of it. Now, take your time and do this for a while. And you may need to go through a couple sets of towels as well. I 
I also think it's a good idea to just flip those towels upside down and move them around. That kind of kind of moves around where the dry and wet spots are. But this is going to take a little bit. I mean, you're going to be spending at least five or ten minutes on this part if you're going to do it justice. I have stepped on this a lot now and squished every last bit of water I can out of it. And now it is time to hit the dryer. One thing you're going to no doubt notice at this point is that your quilt or sleeping bag is very lumpy and the feathers are going to be in clumps all over the place. But don't worry, we are going to take care of this when it goes into the dryer. When we put it into the dryer, we're going to be doing it in 45 minute segments and a bunch of them. And it's going to be at either extra low or low heat. Start out with your dryer on the lowest possible heat setting and kind of see what it does. My extra low has virtually no heat, so I set it just on low and it just gets barely warm, so that works fine. But you just don't want it to be too hot. That's gonna be really bad. So keep it at the lowest setting that's gonna actually produce at least some level of warmth for it. And what you're also gonna do is gonna be putting three tennis balls in the dryer with it. So let's head over to the dryer and we'll get this process started. I'm at the dryer and a couple things here is one, I've got it at 45 minutes and then I also have it on the low setting. My dryer does have an extra low setting, but through trial and error, I found that I can get away with being on low. But you want to start out at the lowest temperature your dryer goes and you definitely don't want it to overheat. If the extra low temp is not warm enough to really dry it at all, you can move it up to low, but nothing where your quilt would feel hot to the touch at all. minutes in. Still pretty damp but it's drying a little bit. I can tell it's not too warm which is something to check for and uh, you got to go in and make sure that the tennis balls didn't get stuck in the foot box or anything. And my foot box here feels like it's all fine so we're gonna shut this thing and another 45 minutes on low. My second 45 minutes in. Oh yeah, coming along. Definitely, definitely still a little damp. So it's got to go in for at least one more. I would say probably two. Round three is done. Mm, yep, I can still feel a little bit of dampness in here for sure. So, back in you go. Round four. Oh, there's a tennis ball right on top. Feeling this, it is almost done. It probably is pretty close, but I can still feel just the slightest amount of dampness in it. So I'm gonna, yeah, definitely right here I can feel there's still some damp feathers. I told you this takes a long time, so I'm going to run this at least one more time. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, I'm ready to call this done. Oh yeah, look at how fluffy this thing is. This is like brand new, so nice and fluffy and puffed out. This is great. I was really happy with how that turned out. It just was so puffy and full of volume. And you know, over time as you're using your quilt or your sleeping bag and it gets crunched up on your pack, kind of gets a little bit flat after a while. And washing it and then drying it really slow like that just helps breathe new life and volume into it. And it's almost like brand new. So I've given you all the steps that you need here. I know the first time I went through this process, I was a little bit nervous. I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to wreck my really nice and expensive quilt. But when you follow those steps, you use the right soap, you don't twist it, you dry it on a super low setting. Those are all the things you gotta do and it will come out just fine. In fact, I'm sure you'll be thrilled with the results. A couple things to touch on though before we wrap up. And one is around safety. I should have been wearing safety goggles as I was splashing the quilt around in the soapy water because that stuff could easily splash up and get into your eye. So that's one thing that you should do if you're gonna do this at home. 
Also, I did not use a dryer sheet. I just don't want to get any film or residue left over on my quilt, so I just didn't use one in case you were wondering. I've given you all the steps that you need to do a great job washing your down quilt or your down sleeping bag. So if you give it a shot, please let me know how it works out for you. Aside from that, if you found any value in this video, as always, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, and we'll see you all on the trail.